As a top destination for imported waste, Malaysia faces mounting challenges in managing and disposing this influx. Hema Mahadevan, who is leading the plastics campaign for Greenpeace Malaysia, shares more on the broken recycling system. Greenpeace calls it a recycling myth. Worldwide, only 9% of plastic has been recycled. In Malaysia, as of 2022, only 33.1% of waste has been recycled. Um, we do not have any capacity to deal with our own waste and the waste coming from other countries. And it's not Japan. I've been to some of these sites um, in 2021. It's from UK, it's from Ireland, it's America, for example. And that has now, there's a snowball effect because now we're not only dealing with plastic waste, but we have been receiving numerous reports of other waste coming into the com uh, country, that is the e-waste, um, including illegal shipments from the U.S., so the plastic trade issue has brought a lot of problems besides just its plastic waste. When it was happening, besides the influx of illegal recyclers, um, legal recyclers were also having a hard time getting rid of a lot of the waste that was brought in because not all plastics are recyclables. Hema explains how the huge amount of waste dumped in Malaysian landfills affects the people. High-income countries have been putting up this um, narrative in their own countries that we are solving our waste um, issues, but in reality is that they, they are just sending their waste to lower income countries and Malaysia being the brunt of it. And it's been happening for years now. Who are the ones who are impacted by this? It's us. It's the local communities in Malaysia who are facing the brunt of it. You know, they're burning some of these plastics, especially by the illegal um, recyclers. This illegal, um, there's illegal open landfills. There's facilities generating toxic waste, you know, that is your air being polluted, water pollution, and they've all caused environmental and health problems to our people. Biodegradable and compostable materials are not the answer as they perpetuate a throwaway culture. Hema calls for a shift in the narrative from waste management to reducing the production of plastics. And in terms of consumers, we can start really demanding for change. You know, consumers are constantly blamed for the plastic pollution by the petrochemical industry. However, we are really not given a choice. For example, almost everything comes packaged with single-use plastics, whether it's at the grocery stores or whether it's restaurants, or whether we um, are on online platforms, uh, for example, to name a few. So it is not our job as consumers to solve this issue, but we can start asking for changes. And whilst we are doing that, I think we really need to start also refusing single-use plastics, uh, making lifestyle changes to, re to reduce our plastic consumption at home. With plastic production going out of control, Hema says long-term action is needed to fix the system. The Malaysian government can introduce um, market incentives for reuse initiatives. So this could include tax breaks, subsidies, um, priority in government procurement processes for businesses that adopt reuse models. So that would be an example of your reuse and refill businesses, um, zero waste stores, for example. And this would include incentives for business to switch to, or like current businesses who are not there yet, um, to switch to reuse systems as well. We can leverage and build upon um, existing policies um, and shift the focus and conversation to plastic production reduction and then, you know, transition to reuse and refill um, the, the refu reuse and refill economy in phases. But, you know, recently, um, young Rohamad Juan Nick Nasmi came out saying that NRES is in negotiations to formulate a national policy um, specifically on plastics. Um, and I think that's a great move, but that is, you know, we need to look at all the factors that I mentioned earlier in terms of bioplastics, in terms of companies using bioplastics as a gateway to greenwash, for example. So all of these approaches and all of these, um, um, all of these um, things have to really be taken into account before we come up with a um, with a policy, basically, with a, with a national policy.